Harry's Wife, 95.11. Let me read to you. Well, no, not the sounds of my various minions when they're being summoned to Tudor Tower's main chamber to account for their various transgressions, although you could be forgiven for thinking that that's what you were hearing, but actually the screams of individuals who have learned about the secret reading of Harry's wife's book. Yes, according to the Mail Online, an article by Jack Wright, Harry's wife has carried out a secret reading of her picture book, The Bench, for children at the Invictus Games before jetting back to California. Will nobody think of the children exposing them to such a tortuous experience? Not content with boring the arse off those children in Harlem some months ago, where Ginger Bollocks was also made to sit on the story mat and listen like a naughty little boy, and, of course, the notorious reading of this monumental pile of shite in the YouTube video, which somehow indirectly appeared to cause the removal of dislikes being shown, such was the general public's response to that video, by giving it a greater ratio of dislikes to likes, Harry's wife continues. The first point, of course, this desire to keep reading this publication demonstrates the level of her delusion. She doesn't see that people are interested. She doesn't see that, for the most part, people don't think that it's particularly any good. Also, that she fails to realise that it's not really a publication that children want to listen to, as I've explained elsewhere. They want to hear about Peppa Pig, or Captain Underpants, or traditional tales that are read, the various fables and storybook material that most of you have grown up knowing. They don't want to listen to some self-indulgent material which is really directed towards her own child and her husband. And, of course, her grandiosity and arrogance prevails in that she thinks that everybody's going to be interested in what she has written. They're not. Furthermore, Given the repeated feedback and general derision that it's received, she still persists in exposing herself to ridicule. This is a good example of demonstrating how the mid-range narcissist doesn't learn from mistakes and demonstrates the compartmentalization that a narcissist engages in by pressing the reset button. Many of you I've seen in the comments over the course of this series have posed the question, doesn't she see that she's disliked? Doesn't she realise that her behaviour attracts criticism? Why doesn't she modify it? Her narcissism won't let her. If she were to modify her behaviour permanently, she would be giving up control to other people, and her narcissism will not let that happen. Her narcissism causes her to believe that she's always right, that she's brilliant at whatever she does, that she's universally loved. And whenever somebody points out some kind of criticism about what she does, her narcissism basically says, they're wrong, they don't know what they're talking about, they're motivated by hatred, they're racists, they're bigots, they're misogynists. And that allows her to dismiss them, or talk about that behaviour separately for the purposes of asserting control over them. She will never, ever, ever sit down and think to herself, do you know what? Maybe I should stop reading this publication out. Very few people seem to actually enjoy it. In fact, every time I do, I get a load of criticism. I'd be better off just leaving it be. It hasn't really sold too many, and rather than keep attracting ridicule and basically scoring own goals, I should stop. Her narcissism will not let her do that. It compartmentalises. So when there is criticism previously, for example, when she read the book in Harlem, and everybody's saying, great, thanks for turning up, looking like the bouncing berry of Harlem, Chairman Mao goes on tour, 
overdressed in expensive clothing and appearing in front of impoverished children and then boring them with your bug, her narcissism goes, they don't know what they're talking about. Dismiss them. And so then when there's another opportunity, her narcissism doesn't go, whoa, hang on a minute, Duchess of Sussex. Remember last time you did this? Didn't go down too well. Maybe you should avoid doing it. She just plows straight on. Because what happened before is irrelevant. It's fallen off the cliff. It's evaporated into the ether. And it is only relevant to the extent that it allows her to control now. Accordingly, she continues on this course of reading this publication, running the risk of being ridiculed. But where that does happen, her narcissism will just defend her. It tells her that she's a good person, that she's doing things, that children absolutely love it. Well, let's find out more about what the Mail Online has to say about it. Harry's wife, and this was written a couple of days ago, is set to stage a secret reading of her debut book, The Bench, to children at the British Embassy tent at the Invictus Games tomorrow before jetting back to her luxurious £11 million mansion in California. Insiders have revealed... The Duchess of Sussex last year proudly announced that she was inspired to write her £12.99 children's pictured book after writing a poem for Prince Harry's first Father's Day in June 2019, the month after their now two-year-old son Archie was born. Upon its release last year, the bench topped the New York Times bestseller list for children's picture publications, but sold just 3,212 copies in the UK in its first week. Behind books by footballer Marcus Rashford and TV personality Richmond, Richard Osman at the time. Early reviews for the book were not universally positive, though one could that the book's storytelling and illustration give us snapshots of shared moments that evoke a deep sense of warmth. Another described it as soothing, loving, though a little schmaltzy in places. Insiders have told the Sun newspaper that Harry's wife will carry out a secret reading of the publication to children at the British Embassy tent on the Games Park in Holland, where they are filming a Netflix documentary about the competition for injured military veterans. It is not known if the reading will feature in the new programme entitled Heart of Invictus. One suspects that it will, after all... Her narcissism cannot resist the opportunity to show off and have a dozen or so compliant children sat there dutifully staring as inside they're wondering, why am I being made to listen to this? Of course, this allows the assertion of control and children are pretty easy to assert control over, particularly ones which are told, sit, listen, otherwise out comes the cattle prod again. Furthermore, it's all about facade management. It enables her to look like the kind and caring person that her narcissism wants her to be, that she isn't led to believe that she is, even though, of course, we've seen repeated behaviours which suggest the alternative. The whole point of this reading is driven, of course, by her narcissism. For those who are hard of understanding, it isn't about doing a nice thing for the sake of doing a nice thing, it's because her narcissism dictates that it needs to be done. The Mail Online explained that the couple were due to speak on stage at the opening ceremony, and they were set to address the audience at the televised event in The Hague, which would be attended by members of the Dutch royal family and the country's prime minister. Harry and Harry's wife made their first public appearance together in Europe since Megxit, as they broke cover at the Invictus Games, with a Netflix film crew in tow. After the Daily Mail revealed details of their secret detour to Windsor to meet the Queen and Prince Charles, the couple arrived in the Netherlands just ahead of the Games' opening ceremony. Pictures showed the Netflix film crew standing apart from the dozens of photographers covering Harry and Harry's wife's arrival at the Zwiede Park in The Hague. Early reviews for the bench were not universally positive, tells the Daily Mail once again, explaining that one could that the book's storytelling and illustration give us snapshots of shared moments that evoke a deep sense of warmth. A further review said, One wonders how any publisher could have thought fit to publish this grammar-defying set of badly rhyming cod homilies, let alone think any child anywhere would want to read it. But that's Planet Sussex for you, where even the business of raising a family is all about the brand. And indeed, that raises observation which is accurate that demonstrates that 
everything that Harry's wife does is governed by her narcissism when it comes to somebody else for the purposes of the assertion of control, drawing of fuel, character traits, and residual benefits. The creation of this book, she was made to believe that it was being done for the purposes of showing her love and affection for her family and that she wanted other children to benefit from this. But of course, anybody with a few brain cells can look at this and think it's not appropriate for children. It's self-indulgent, although she, of course, can't see that. And of course, the male then once again take the opportunity to have a walkthrough with the bench explaining one illustration shows the entire Sussex family in the garden of their Californian mansion. Harry can be seen feeding their rescued battery hen chickens, the chickens of authenticity, as many of you know from the avatars that you've purchased from the Knowledge Vault, who also featured in the couple's bombshell interview with Oprah Winfrey earlier this year, with Sir Archie too, with the two dogs Beagle, Guy, and Black Labrador Pula running around in the grounds. And Harry's wife can be seen amidst her vegetable patch. I'm not sure if that's her sitting among some of her fans, the sugars. Uh, with a baby in a sling around her chest. Another illustration features a bearded ginger father. Hmm, who could that be? Who bears a resemblance to the Duke, cradling a smiling baby on a bench under a tree. The text reads, This is your bench where life will begin for you and our son, our baby, our kin. In another illustration, a father and son duo each wear pink tutus while performing ballet poses. The accompanying words read, you'll love him, you'll listen, you'll be his supporter. Riveting stuff, huh? Alongside a picture and of a father and son playing with toy dinosaurs, Harry's wife wrote, when life feels in shambles, you'll help him find order. Right. I'm sure any child reading this will be thinking, thank goodness for that. Here I am, sat, thinking that my life is in shambles, if only some order would come along. Papa, Papa, where are you? Could you come and bring some order to my shambolic life? No. Small children want to be able to take the book and feel the fuzzy felts, or chew the corner of it, hence the need for thick cardboard. The Mail Online continued to tell us more about the publication. It isn't necessary, really, to go through that furthermore. It returns, of course, to their involvement in the Victus Games and states that the event at the Games yesterday was supposed to be yellow carpet, but Harry and Harry's wife declined to attend in the last 48 hours, a source told Mail Online. Mail Online. They were granted VVIP status by the local authorities, affording them top-level local protection, which will be seen as an attempt to justify their non-attendance at Prince Philip's memorial service at Westminster Abbey. Triangulation and deflection. Last month over security concerns after Harry's taxpayer-funded protection was stripped when he quit the UK. It comes after critics accuse the couple of cashing in on the games by allowing Netflix, with whom they have signed a $100 million deal, into private meetings. Of course, lack of boundary recognition, need for those residual benefits, assertion of control, and the fact, of course, that they're undoubtedly under pressure from Netflix to create some material, having been paid a ridiculous amount of money, or will be paid a ridiculous amount of money, for something which won't be very interesting at all. Of course, the Invictus Games is meant to be about all of uh, celebrating the bravery of those who are competing. Instead, it's turned into the usual circus that involves Harry's wife and the Ginger Poodle because it has to be all about her. Never mind the achievements and the bravery and the courage of those competing, the adversity that they have overcome. No, we're going to hijack it. I'm going to appear all in white so you all have to look at me. And, of course, we're going to have a film crew there to record it all, because it isn't about you lot, it's about us and the need to make money. This reading of the publication is just another example of the narcissism in action and provides us with a further opportunity to understand why she behaves as she does and for you to see a real-life example of the various aspects, facets and dynamics of narcissism to aid your understanding and increase it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.